for the beauty of this Mother's Day and for this opportunity to worship yet again. We thank you for those that have been able to come out this morning to worship uh, in-house and we also are so grateful for those that are joining us online. So we pray now that in this worship service that your Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us as we focus completely upon you now and in this hour to come. And this prayer we lift to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And I did forget my microphone. You would think after 52 weeks I would, I would be able to remember that. Thank you, Barb. So I'm just going to put this right on. And uh, I can hear me pretty, pretty well here, but uh, I was fooling with my mask because last Sunday and again today, uh, my glasses fogged up. And that is really, uh, for somebody my age that has to wear glasses, uh, it's important for me to be able to see. And I even went to the Montana Eye Place this week and got some anti-fog, but it's, it didn't work too well. <laughs> but anyway, um, so good morning. It's so good to have uh, the uh, Stephanie and Isabel and Susie and Cheryl and Bonnie and Brad and Karen and Maggie and Steve and Gloria back there. And of course, Brad and Barb. Uh, we appreciate them. This is their eighth Sunday to uh, video uh, our services, uh, both on Facebook Live as well as uh, on the our church YouTube channel. Well, um, let me share with a few announcements, and perhaps some of you have announcements this morning too. Um, we uh, do want to invite all of you that are watching online uh, to join us in communion toward the end of our service and time together. So uh, we have communion, of course, prepared here. Uh, but if you could get a cracker or some crackers and juice and be prepared for this a little bit later in our service, uh, I think it would be a very special time for you at home as well as uh, those of us that are here today. Immediate, not immediately following, but about one o'clock uh, Mountain Daylight Time, we will have a Zoom fellowship uh, get together and it's been so fun the last few Sundays to have uh, this time because once you go into the Zoom meeting room, you can see all of the faces of, of those that are joining us. And I had the Zoom of all Zoom meetings this on Friday morning. I was here about 10.30 and I went to the Zoom meeting for the Board of Trustees at Northwest Christian College University, Bushnell University soon to be. And there were over 30 people in this Zoom meeting. So they wouldn't all fit on my computer. <laughs> but it was so fun to be able to see everyone there. And let me say, for probably for one of the first times in the history of the college and the university, there was 100% attendance. People from Dallas, from Helena, from uh, Eugene, from all over 
the country trustees and it was a, a great meeting and it didn't go on forever and ever either. So uh, anyway, so this Zoom technology is something we can slowly work ourselves into as we need to. And of course, all of our church meetings at this time are uh, mostly by Zoom, but uh, stay tuned because this will, we will be able to be having, uh, having meetings in person too. <laughs> so, and then as most all of you know, uh, this is my 52nd week in Helen. Can you believe it? I can I remember this time last year um, coming back to Helena. Um, I had been here to visit and, and move into the apartment here. And then May 17th or 16th was my first Sunday here. So it's been one year and we're still, um, our search committee is continuing to interview and to um, seek our next permanent pastor. But in the meanwhile, uh, before the pastor, uh, new pastor comes, uh, next Sunday, Glory, you're going to be speaking here. Did you know that? <laughs> you, it might be Shamiz. Okay, one of you, either uh, Shamiz Doris Carr or, or Gloria Sawyer will be preaching and then the next two Sundays, Reverend Dave Anderson, United Methodist, is he pastor? Is he going to be preaching? You're working on that. Yes. Okay. And then uh, leaders in the church, Isabel, maybe you'll be doing something up here as a as a school project, maybe. Who knows? But uh, anyway, Maggie and her committee, I'm sure, have it under under um, underway, and it will all work out fine. So, for the announcements today, first of all, uh, last Sunday we officially, the church reopened, and I wasn't fully aware of that, but, uh, but our board moderator has written a very nice, concise um, letter to our church, which shares that we have reopened. Uh, but it's really up to you, those of you that are still watching at home, uh, when you feel comfortable coming back to our in-house worship. But we do have s several um, guidelines that we do request for everybody to follow, and that's to wear a mask. There's um, a basket full of beautiful masks uh, in the entryway that Maggie has prepared, and sanitizer and all of those things and of course our distancing our chairs have been arranged um, where we can have uh, distancing so no hugging yet but uh, only the the air hugs right <laughs> and uh, so anyway that's I think all of that and then we will be having um, our board meeting, I believe, a week from uh, Tuesday, is that, or Monday, it's on Monday this month, so a week from um, Monday, we have um, regional Zoom meetings, we have um, the Circles of Trust Zoom meetings with Gloria, uh, so, um, and I think I think most all of you that are here know what is coming up, and those of you that are watching from home, um, you get the e-news. I think it only went out late um, yesterday, so um, please make note of that, and then we will go through our, um, our prayer request in just a few, few moments when we get to that part. Do we have any announcements from any of you here today? Um, okay, well with that, I think we're going to uh, just virtually hug one another, say good morning, <laughs> and uh, we will uh, move to our next 
worship uh, item. And there comes Jane Shokus Powell there. Welcome. Uh, we're going to have a song by Mark Van Alstein. And uh, he is going to be singing and bringing music on the screen. So with that, let's welcome Mark. And here Mark again. to get a power cord. Okay, our computer just went down, but I think we're going to move into our children's message, right? And that's yes. Barb, too. So and that's Barb. We so we're, did Barb leave the building? Okay. All right, well then, that means that we'll come back to those two. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got it. I've got it. Uh-huh. Um, Brad, do you want to go ahead and sure. read the scripture for us this sure. morning? Sure, so bear with me. Uh-huh. And we'll get the cameras turned there. Uh, I do want to say, I will go ahead and say this instead of at the prayer time while Brad is getting ready, but um, seeing Daryl shoe there uh, in that video, I just spoke with Daryl and, and Beth this morning and had a prayer over the phone with them. They're actually leaving today for Billings and Daryl will be having uh, triple bypass surgery this coming uh, Tuesday morning very early, he said, like at 5.30. At least he'll be checking at 5.30. But uh, we had a delightful visit and they really appreciate our prayers, the prayers of the church here. So they anticipate being in um, Billings for a week, and their daughter is coming in uh, also um, from where she lives. So, all right, Brad, in well, preparation for the message of the morning, if you will lead us. I will. And folks, you just happen to bear with us. Our power cord just arrived. So um, should I go ahead and do the scripture? And then we'll wing it as to getting back on track here. And the way things are going, I hope I have the right scripture. <laughs> You'll be fine. And to remind, or I'm sure the folks that are here know, we have to run the sound a little bit artificially loud for the cameras to pick up. 
we have not yet connected into our sound system, so you have to bear with that a little bit. But in the meantime, Jesus marches on, and he's talking to us today. John 14, verses 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going? Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. For now on, from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask, for, ask me for anything, I will do it. Brad, do you want to do the children's message? Okay, so we'll welcome Barb uh, to the front and Isabel. <laughs> Can you stay socially distanced, Isabel, from her? Um, she can stay there if she wants to. <laughs> she might not want to be on the Whoop. camera. So, I will take this off to be understood. So, a morning of surprises. It's, uh, um, it's Mother's Day. So I was thinking about my mother, and I know a lot of people are thinking about their mothers, and um, wanted to ask you what things you think of that your mother did that showed you love. Because in the scripture today, Jesus is talking about how the love that we receive from him and from God is in our hearts, and that we can give it out to others. So I was thinking about my mom and how she used to braid my hair, which was loving and made my day better, and cook me biscuits. Do you have some favorite foods that your mom makes, Isabel, or gets for you? <laughs> and she did all the cleaning and didn't expect me to do much. And so just those things that I think of. And then I learned to love through that. So you probably all think of people you've loved, or maybe pets that you've loved and you've cared for the way you were cared for. And um, even when we don't have children, we can still love and care for others. And Jesus taught us that. And so, in thinking about love, what's the one symbol you think of when you think of love? A visual symbol. Anybody? Heart. Heart. So, I was inspired by Tessa, who loves us here at First Christian Church. And for those of you who came in today, you probably saw the rainbow of hearts out there. And um, Tessa put those up. And so I was thinking, what a fun thing it would be this week if we all made some hearts. And um, since I didn't have a lot of paper, plus I love magazine pictures, I found some magazine pictures that had nice color on them. And I made a heart. So all of those folks watching, and for Isabel, 
Um, I didn't get any out, but she can probably make some with the papers I brought if she wants to. Um, you fold it in half and you make a heart. But the thing about it is there is a heart inside a heart. So today we learned about um, Jesus' love inside our hearts. And so this little heart that I made can be cut again and become two hearts. And so I was just making all kinds of hearts because we have these hearts and these hearts and all different sizes. So this week, as you think about how Jesus loves you, you might want to make some hearts and you can make a string of hearts. Or you could be like Tessa and you can make a, a rainbow of hearts. And around town, I even saw a heart of hearts. So lots of love um, is going around during this time. So we'll just keep sharing it. And especially as we think of our mothers today. So, oh, will you pray with me? Jesus, thank you for our mothers and all the people who have put love in our hearts. Help us share this love this week. Amen. Thank you, Barb. Uh, and I do want to say Happy Mother's Day to all of you that are here and all of you that are watching. Um, you know, Mother's Day is a time, and I say this every year, not everybody, um, well, let me go back. Everybody has a mother, had a mother. And we are thankful for mothers that have given us life. Um, some of us, though, perhaps were raised by a grandmother or by an aunt or, you know, there are all sorts of situations. But today we honor uh, women. We honor those uh, women that have brought us into um, to life, and we're grateful for that. So on this Mother's Day of 2020, we do remember and we give thanks uh, to, to God. Well, I've thought a lot this last week about uh, my last message for you and what is really the most important thing that could be shared in a last message. You know, I could perhaps have gone down a long list of uh, suggestions for your future and the relationship that you can have and will have uh, with your next permanent pastor. But I today decided to keep it very simple and to simply state what I deeply believe for you and for this church. And that is this. Be encouraged for your future. And not only for your future, but for a magnificent future. There's no reason that my future and your future and the church's future here and around the world cannot be anything else but magnificent. And I really want you to believe this. And to all of you that are listening and watching uh, online as well. Because no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what your spiritual relationship might be, um, I want you to have this good word, and that is to be encouraged. Be encouraged no matter what is ahead, even as we all live through this very, very different time. And for many people, a very... Uh, Difficult time, not only different, but difficult. And of course, it's all easier to say than to do, right? But just look at the text that was shared with you this morning. Almost all of this passage this morning are the words of Jesus himself. And so to look at this, the Gospel of John itself, we know that John is a disciple. He uh, is indeed the disciple Jesus loved, and that is shared later in this gospel. John even quotes Jesus in his gospel and begins by 
challenging us with these words which are so familiar and words that I've used throughout my ministry. Do not be troubled. Do not be troubled. And for some of you that are watching this morning and perhaps some of you that are here in this room this morning, some of us are troubled, perhaps. And all we have to do is turn on the news, whether it's the morning news or the noon news or the nightly news, and we see trouble. There is trouble everywhere. Even though we nightly recognize our health care workers here, we, in Missoula, we howl. In New York, uh, in, and in Helena, we howl. And in New York City, they applaud. And some places in South America, they turn on lights or their, the lights of their phones, and they recognize health care workers. And even though we recognize teachers this last week, we recognized nurses this past week, and some of us even uh, participated in a national day of prayer this last week. There is still trouble. Trouble in River City. <laughs> but Jesus says, you trust God, now trust in me. Remember Simon Peter a little bit earlier before this passage this morning? His question, Lord, where are you going? See, Simon Peter sensed trouble. Jesus knew exactly where he was going, and in his words, he is even now trying to encourage his followers to actually be encouraged, to not be troubled, to trust, to believe, and to believe that the future would and could be very bright. And I always love to say that the future is as bright as the promises of God themselves. Yes, it's so easy for a speaker on this Mother's Day to tell you that everything is going to be all right. How many mamas have told us that through the years? Everything is going to be all right as you call your next minister, as you continue to live through this pandemic. And yes, as you begin to slowly and carefully come out and about, all of these things so much easier said than done. There have been hundreds of thousands of lives that have been changed forever because of what we're going through now. There were hundreds of thousands of lives changed forever with World War II and with the Vietnam War and all the wars before and since. And even though death may not be a part, COVID-19 has been a part. Loss of jobs and income have been a part. Social distancing and masks and hand sanitizer have all been a part. But still in our old world, hunger continues to be a part. And let me say, if you're in the Helena area and you're hungry, we have a food cupboard here at this church. Uh, waiting for you. We just need to know where you are and what you need. Homelessness, strife, division, even putting one space between sentences instead of two spaces. <laughs> oh, the trials and the tribulations of our modern, postmodern day living. What our passage of Scripture teaches and underlines for us this morning is the age-old truth, which is written in verse 6. And this is the passage that I've used, and so many officials have used 
through hundreds of years at funerals and homegoing celebrations. And it is perhaps as difficult for Christians, at least sometimes anyway, as it is for non-believers and believers in other faiths, that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one can be connected with God again except through Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not going to debate that scripture or really any other scripture. That's not my job to do. Obviously, as a Christian, I believe that for me, for me, Jesus is the way to God. And the Apostle John writes what Jesus himself has said, no one can come to the Father except through me. But we live in a world where some believe that there are many, many ways to God. And those ways and those religions have been practiced for centuries. Others believe that all religions are just man's way of trying to get to God or to even become God. Just this last Friday evening, and perhaps you saw it, Dateline had another riveting and fascinating story about the late Rulon Jeffs, who had, I believe, 65 wives, count them. And 65 wives means 65 mothers-in-law, somebody pointed out. In his fundamental LDS church, now this is not the LDS church, this is the fundamental offshoot. Rulon Jeffs was the prophet and what he said was all truth. And so, when we hear the voice that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and we read it in Holy Scripture, we must still be still and know and trust. Look at verse 11 in the discussion here that Philip has with Jesus. Just believe, he says. Just believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of what you have seen me do. You see, even then, in that now, it was difficult to believe. You know, Jesus has the answers to all of the questions that you and I have. We're just not necessarily going to get all of the answers right now. Last week I asked the question online and in my message last Sunday, what voice or what voices are you listening to? Belief is trust. Belief is hearing the still, small voice. And yes, belief is seeing in some situations because God has given us eyes to see and he's given us a brain to reason. When we can believe, we can be encouraged. I want you as participants or as members of Helen's First Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, to believe that you can have a glorious future. I would put the little money that I have on a glorious future because this church has existed 135 years just in this building. But it even goes back a little bit before that to the 1860s. 
God can see it because after all, it's God's church. We are a part of the universal church of God, even if some might believe that there are many ways to God. I can remember growing up and even up until recently, even, but especially in my early ministry, some saying, well, that is not the Jesus that I believe. That's a different Jesus. Have you heard of that? <laughs> and for the world, many in the Christian church see Jesus in different lights. The Jesus of the Jehovah Witness, for instance. The Jesus of the Southern Baptist. The Jesus of the Independent Christian Church. The Jesus of the LDS Church. The Jesus of the United Church of Christ. The Congregational Church. Do you see what I'm saying? This passage of Jesus' words is to encourage you. This passage of Jesus' words is to implore you to believe. This passage of Jesus' words is to invite you to God. Maybe you believe. Maybe you don't believe. Belief is between you and God. Just as Jesus talks with Thomas and Philip and Simon Peter. You know, there are things in life that we don't have a choice on. The things we are born with. The things that we carry. But there are things that we do choose. We can choose to believe or not to believe. We can choose to have joy or not to be happy. We can choose to be positive or negative. We can choose to get along or not to get along. We can choose to believe that the best is yet to come or that we will continue to be mired in the mud of a troubled world and existence. And so as I get ready to leave this next week and return to Idaho, I want you, the church, to choose this for you. That Jesus is the way. That Jesus is the truth. That Jesus is the life. And by living that, even though you and I may not fully be able to grasp it all, that you can be encouraged for a magnificent future. I've walked every part of this building. Every part. I've looked into every space. And I've even walked around the building. And what I've found is this. Memories. Memories of 135 years. What I found, though, is just a building. But a building with so much history and gorgeous historic architecture and these stained glass windows. Oh, my. There are none greater than right here. But the church is not a historic building at 311 Power Street. The church is you and you. The church is in you and you have believed and you continue to walk and to look forward and through Jesus the Christ you bring honor and glory to Creator God. That is what the Scripture says. That is what Jesus is saying here. Believe in me. 
Do my work and you will bring glory and honor to my Father God. Never forget Calvary's love. Never forget that with God all things are possible. Never forget that love is the way. And for all those saints who have come and gone, never forget them. Your parents, your brothers and sisters, never forget them. But look to that which is ahead. For this church can have an even more glorious future if you believe. And so I leave you again with these words. Be encouraged for a magnificent future. O oh Lord our God, we are so grateful that you are our guide and that you see the way and that indeed you are the way and when we are troubled and when we are discouraged and down may you your word lift us up to a new day to a new beginning how thankful we are that you loved us enough, dear Creator God, to send a part of yourself in the form of Jesus, fully human and fully God, and then left us with your Holy Spirit to lift us up and to guide us and to show us the way. And so, God, May your hand be upon this church. Every individual that is a part of this church. Lead us. Guide us. Encourage us. Lift us up for your glory. This day and forevermore. Amen and amen. 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 In the Christian Church Disciples, we all have an opportunity to respond. And really the best way I think that we can all respond is to do just what I've said, to be God's faithful in a new way and to be encouraged and to be encouragers to others, to one another. And so if you're watching from home or if you're here in person this morning and have made a new decision, let our elders know or let me know. A new decision to live for Christ in a new way as we make this new beginning or to unite with this church family. Um, we're not going to embarrass you or do anything that will make you feel uncomfortable, um, but you may want to unite with this uh, church and to be obedient through, to God through baptism. So let us know if that's you and if this is the time. And now we move into that time in the service that we have our prayers of the people. And perhaps some of you here have prayers we, um, that you would like to mention uh, verbally. And I know that each and every week there are many unspoken prayers. I did uh, speak earlier this morning with Sally Angove and the news there is that Clyde is walking around and he's eating better and he's feeling better and they're going to have a family potluck today even 
<laughs> which is really encouraging. And of course, he wants the 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 furniture that's been brought in to be taken away and all of that. But we do want to continue to remember uh, Clyde and Gove. And they, Sally was telling me, they've been in their home there for 50 years, since 1971. And um, continue to pray for Sally and for their family. Their daughter is still here from uh, California uh, as well. So uh, we want to pray for uh, his client's health as he uh, goes through this difficult time. And then as I mentioned earlier, uh, Daryl Shu will be having triple bypass surgery early this Tuesday morning and they are leaving for Billings actually this afternoon and uh, they, I had a prayer with them over the phone this morning as well and they're so grateful to this church and they've been a part of this church for many years as those of you that are here know and they appreciate uh, your love and prayers and this is a difficult time where hospitals are very of course very busy uh, they're on top of all of this that's going on but for family members sometimes and for ministers we're not allowed to, to go in and visit at this time so um, but I'm sure Beth as well as um, Sally would appreciate your contact either through email or Maybe a phone call, but um, let's just remember them, especially. And we have others on our long list that I won't, uh, won't read at this time. Uh, Susie, tell us how Bob is doing and his strength and how is he coming along? Well, well it's all about water and staying hydrated. And he argues with me whether he's had two bottles, two bottles or three bottles. So finally I numbered the bottles. One, two, three. And the other day he didn't drink. And the next day he fell down and he's back to using his walk, walker. But I think he does believe that it's the water. It's related to it. You know, that is a good lesson for all of us, isn't it? Water and hydration. And Cheryl, I want, we want to know about Fritz, too. Fritz had surgery last November in Missoula, and he's been going through therapy, right? Right. Yeah, he's, he's doing much better. The last three weeks have been really good, so he's starting to eat, which is a really encouraging thing. Yes. Um, things will get back more back to normal if he can eat, but he's not. It, it's still puree kind of stuff, but he's at least eating. Um, he had complications with some stuff with his teeth that caused a setback, and then of course the the um, therapy all got put on hold. So right. he's back, but he's back doing both speech and swallowing therapy as well as some physical therapy to get rid of some edema in his neck. Um, that was because of all the lymph nodes being removed there. Um, but yeah, he's doing well. Well, that's good. Well, we continue to pray. It's been long. For, yes, November to now is a long time. A long time? Yeah. Yes, so. And you're absolutely correct on the hydration. Um, you know, it's still, it's a pain to have that stomach tube in, that pig feeding, but it really, it, without it, he wouldn't get the hydration. He would not have gotten the hydration he needed during this whole process. Right. It's been good. But he keeps his sense of humor. That's good. And he's strong. I mean, he's, you know, he's doing... He's and he's got the best nurse in you now. Yeah. I've said that before. <laughs> yeah, nursing is not my forte. <laughs> <laughs> and I know Susie's a good nurse, too. <laughs> Are there other reports on our people? Uh, yes, James Schoeper Stowell. Um, um, Evelyn called me early this morning and she was having 
problems with her computer, and she was so concerned, is everybody going to church and everything? And I said, okay, slow down, Evelyn. <laughs> How are you doing? Her, I just wanted, she said, well, give her a shout for, her and Mike are doing fine. And I am and Mike. Like, <laughs> yeah, she'll appreciate that. And she says, well, because she, she just didn't want to miss out on anything. So she's trying to get her computer ready, so, so hopefully it's good that by the time so she can see the service. Thank you. And Barb. I just uh, want to give a, a, a blessing is that Barb Creel says she'll have her 93rd birthday this week. On that Friday, she will be 90. Happy birthday, Barb Creel. 93 this coming Friday, May 15th. Yes. Are there other prayer uh, reports? Of course, we want to pray for. Uh, Continue to pray for Tammy and Brian Beatty. And um, let's see if there are other... Well, there, there's just lots. Um, but especially um, our search committee, of course, as they continue to interview candidates. Um, our health care workers and responders... Yes, yes, the peace officers, and we just had the National Correctional and Detention Officers Week uh, as well. Northwest Christian University against Bushnell University, the 1st of July. Anything else? Yes, Bonnie. Yes, Kay Hartman. Hi, Bernie and Kay. Uh, Kay is having her surgery in Bozeman on Monday the 18th, which is, which is, uh, and Jane, you have? Um, I talked to Bernie yesterday, and she has had a delay again. Oh. So they're going to go June 1st. She's going to have the... Um, she's having her surgery is going to be June 1st. Okay, There's thank another you for delay, that. Okay. delay, but they've been doing two-mile walking, and she's been <laughs> scooting in her, in her um, walker, so she's doing really well. Um, their son is home, and uh, he's moving to Atlanta, and that's quite good news to know that he's going to be around. Also, I was kind of in a drive-by yesterday. I drove by, and, and, here, and I decided I was going to haunt the the um, Monica and, and Clark and, and Ari, and here they were in the yard, and everything is so we sat, we distanced ourselves, the dogs are trying to play. But anyway, they're doing well too, so it's always good to just see faces, so don't be surprised if I drive by. <laughs> <laughs> and I know uh, the church of Meridian is they had a drive by, it would be like some of us standing on the sidewalk out here, and all of Power Street would just be car after car. And they just waved. And they had a prayer mobile over here. If you needed prayer, you could drive up to the prayer. So there's so many ways that creative things that are being done through this time. Well, thank you for that update on Kay uh, Hartman. So her surgery will be June 1st instead of May 18th. All right, let's have, have a prayer all of these prayers from you, God's people. Loving God, we're so thankful that you have heard each and every prayer request and that you've answered so many of our prayers during this time and really throughout our lives. And even those times that you have been silent, we have felt your presence. And we know that you love us and that you care about us. And whether it is cancer or upcoming surgery or whether it's trying to discipline ourselves to, to hydrate or whatever it might be, we just pray to God that you will continue to give us the strength that we need to face our situations that we are all in, and we all have something, dear God. Be with those that are grieving, be with those that are facing uh, 
severe illness, be with those who are recovering and that are going through treatments. And loving God, uh, show us uh, in new ways and in special ways that, yes, you have promised never to leave us nor to forsake us, but you are our strength and you are our refuge and you are our hope as we go through uh, these times. We thank you so much, dear Father, for seeing us through all of life. And we pray now that you will continue to uh, minister to our hearts and be with us as we um, go through uh, our living for you. And so we honor you, we bring praise to you, and may you receive all of the glory. Uh, and this prayer we lift in the name of our resurrected Savior Jesus, who has taught us to pray using sins and sinners. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And be this one temptation, but for us from you, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
we will get our cameras turned. Uh, wasn't that wonderful? That was Ted Van Alstyne. And we are learning so many things about doing things the same, only differently. And it was such a joy when Bart found that video last night, and I thought, you know, it's just, it's great. There are just lots of ways to do things. Which brings me to today's scripture. In scripture, I'm going to demaster just a little bit. We are wearing masks, pretty faithfully. We're spread out, so if someone doesn't have a mask on, we're, we're still safe. But they are hard to breathe through sometimes. But scripture always challenges me, which I guess is a good thing. And Gene and I do not compare notes before he preaches and I reflect. Uh, I have never been one that received biblical messages with the clarity that some others seem to enjoy. What seems simple and clear to some is simply not so for me. If it were so simple, why do we see the huge variety of worship in this world? Gene alluded to that in his sermon today. And even in this community, every time I do a drive in Helena, or walk, it seems like I discover another church. Many, perhaps most, seem to post simple, clear directives on their reader boards out front for the right way to be for them. But if the right way to be were straightforward, why do we have? So many different churches, so many different religion, so many different ways and customs of worship. Perhaps John 14 gives us a clue. 